Well, we're here at Blitzkrieg. We're gonna do some Dynapack uh, axle dynamometer testing. So we're just getting set up with the machines to do this. And uh, we'll start getting some preliminary uh, data pretty soon, I think. So um, should be fun. Got the nitrous system set up there so I can get some uh, basic data on that too. So we got so there's the, um, I'll just leave it looking at that, and I'm going to do a poll right now. We did one at 13.0 field error, and now we're doing it at 13.2 field error ratio. Okay. Didn't make a coon worth a difference. 191.3, I think the last one. Oh no, it tells you. Was it showing you the last one is in yellow? So here's your, here's your order. Orange, green, blue, pink, so, light blue, yellow. Okay, right? so, so the latest one is which color? It's, it's gonna be green, so you first. So I made, I made one horsepower more by, by going for slightly leaner. Okay, fuel table's at 13.4, we'll do another pull now. Put it in gear, maybe. Okay. Look at that! It made two more horsepower. Okay, we're gonna do another pull at 13.6 fuel to ratio. didn't like it and wants to be down at 13.4 so there we go okay so now I've gone from 26 degrees of total timing to 28 so we'll see whether it likes that okay here we go it liked more timing gain two horsepower One ninety seven still likes the timing. We go to thirty two. Seems like a lot of timing. Thirty two degrees of total timing. He's made another couple of horsepower. We're up to one ninety eight. So now what we're going to do is we're doing injector end angle. So I've moved it 45 degrees uh, back in time from bottom dead center. Pulled off the uh, error uh, box and let the ITBs do their thing. Okay, we'll see how she goes here. Can it beat 197? One horsepower. <laughs> I, I didn't. Ah, fuck, eh? Okay, well. well. Hang on. Up. Oh, oh, I wow, see. Over curves. Oh, wow. Okay, Holy so, shit, it's huge. so, so said, it made so a big difference. 
up is your older set of you start losing power. This you're gaining in the carriage all the way up. Oh yeah. And look at your flat. You're flat at one horsepower or more. Where those you peaked. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. It so makes yeah, a big that's difference. a big improvement. Okay. Let's try. I'll try the small uh, small trumpets now. So after that very dramatic improvement in mid range from removing the air box, we're going to the shorter trumpets. So let's have a look. Are we ready to roll? Okay, here we are. A lot more power. Very interesting. Very under curve, you get more they did you see it make more peak, right? Made more peak. But your high end torque drops. So you're better off with the longer. That's longer. weird, eh? Your torque But your, your peak drops. number went up. I knew it would. But your torque drops a lot. Yeah. Your torque under curve is uh, a little bit longer. Yeah, I'll, I'll compute that to see exactly what it is for my. Try more aggressive timing down low. See if you can't make up for the torque difference. Interesting, yeah. So we're going to try this with um, 30 horsepower of nitrous now. We'll see if things are good or bad. All right. Not sure anything happened there. But, um, I didn't hear any spray. I didn't. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Hang on. Hmm. Yeah. So no nitrous. Two hundred and four horsepower. That's legit horse. That's, That's legitimate. Strong. There's the boss. Air. He's telling you it's legit. You got the air temp hanging right here. Nobody's cheating. All right, so we were unable to use the nitrous guys because my nitrous enabled pin on the ECU is not, I should have tested it before I got here, but it's it's not recognizing when I flick the switch, so it won't arm the nitrous, so I gotta go home and figure out that wiring. All right, sorry for the flickering. Um, so I'm back home now. The nitrous was a bust because I didn't have the nitrous enable uh, properly wired into the ECU, so it wouldn't arm the system. Um, first run was actually 191 horsepower, but this is the second run. Anyway, we've bumped the torque up uh, thir almost 14 foot-pounds, and we've bumped the horsepower up uh, 11 pounds by tuning it. Uh, we leaned the engine out from 13.0 to a 13.4 fuel to ratio. We went from 26 degrees of total timing to 32 changed nothing about the injector and angle which is when the injectors fire relative to the compression stroke so left it so that the injector stopped firing at the bottom of the um, like just just before the comp comp compression stroke goes up so the as the valves are closing and that seems to be where it wants to be um, big news is if I pull my air filter off you get this big jump in um, the 5,000 to 7,000 range doesn't change the total power very much, but it really fattens up that range. And um, the shorter uh, trumpet um, adds a few horsepower without sacrificing too much of the bottom end. So anyway, um, hugely valuable. I think I can build some more lower end torque just by increasing the timing. I only had, you know, moved the timing from 26 to 32 degrees above five from 5,000 up. And um, so I think I can probably add a couple more foot-pounds of torque down below. But otherwise, we're ready to go. I mean, I'll get the nitrous system wiring to the right pin, and I'll test that on the street before I hit the track uh, a week tonight. So, or a week today. So, yeah, no, just really interesting. By the way, the dyno pack, it's like a $150,000 dyno, and um, a good conversion factor, a conservative conversion factor on the dyno pack is... 15% uh, loss through a manual transmission, so that puts us at exactly 240 horsepower. So I've been talking that number for a long time, and this is pretty much validation. So awesome. By the way, he said it's the most power he's ever seen on a normally aspirated 2-liter motor 
on his dyno and all of the all of his days. So he said, "Congratulations for a street motor that actually uh, acts like a race engine." So I'm happy.